Hey everyone, it's Sawan here, and recent news about one or two days ago on how the highly anticipated Metro Exodus game is becoming one more of those uh, timed exclusives to the new and somewhat controversial Epic Game Store, but whoever had pre-ordered on Steam would still be able to play there. Now, it wasn't just the Metro title, but in the past, The Division 2 and even other smaller titles like Ashen, which I've been playing uh, quite a lot recently, uh, the new upcoming game from the folks over at uh, Supergiant Games 80s, all have been made timed exclusives to Epic Game Store, uh, with the average deal of one year. Now, making a small update on that whole story, uh, THQ Nordic uh, put out a statement earlier today talking about the decision to have Metro Exodus as a timed exclusive was entirely made by Coke Media. Now you say, but what does THQ Nordic and Coke Media have to do with Deep Silver? Metro publisher. Well, uh, Deep Silver forms the video game publishing division of Coke Media, and THQ Nordic in turn bought out Coke Media a year ago to become one of its subsidiaries as a sister company. So there's a big trail of companies and corporations that eventually leads to the Metro IP, but in the end, Coke Media owns the said IP, and this is just a way for THQ Nordic to move away from all the fire and outrage to just say, hey, it's not our fault, it's those guys over there, be angry at them. Now, it was also stated that they would like players to have a choice between platforms of their liking and have games available in as many outlets as possible, which makes sense to me. There is tons of games that you can find both on Steam, good old games, you play, and etc. And making it exclusive and forcing you to a specific store is something Thing that naturally will make the community upset and not happy as it's clearly anti-consumer and is one of the points of the video that I will develop further. As a last note, THQ did not rule out the possibility of more future games being timed exclusives, so in the end I guess will depend on how much money will be waived in front of Coke Media to decide to either or not make them time exclusives to the Epic Store, unfortunately, because the only real reason publishers want their games exclusive to the Epic Store or why they decide to put them there is due to the money hatting the Epic Store does. The fact that the Epic Store offers far better percentages on game sales, 12% over 30% cuts on Steam, and that's a clear positive for, of course, the publishers. Uh, with that out of the way, let's go back to the previous main topic of this video and talk about why we dislike having Epic Store or any other store really force upon us. So, taking aside all the obvious reasons why people dislike this, because this has happened uh, countless times before, when EA Origin came around, so Uplay and many others, I mean, you probably have your desktop filled with all these different launchers and stores by now, uh, much like has happened with the streaming services like Netflix, Hulu's, and Amazon Primes, and so on and on. Uh, the obvious reasons of this is that people are used to Steam. It was the first big service of its kind, so it's natural that people by now have big collections of games on there and wish to have all their games in one place, and it's not change from application to application or launcher to launcher. Now, for others, it goes beyond this. Uh, one can argue that there is need for other stores or launcher type of apps to coexist. Sure, Steam does have a digital distribution monopoly of sorts, but EA games don't really exist on Steam, unless for older titles. Blizzard games don't either, and even some newer Activision titles. But that's still fair enough, Steam does still have more or less a monopoly in that area, and competition can be good. However, many titles share outlets, like I said previously. If I want to play The Witcher, I have a choice between good old games or Steam. And many Ubisoft games are also both on Steam and Uplay, and so on. Now, the Epic Store forces exclusivity with the games they put on there. So now, with the Metro game being one example, you don't have a choice. Unless you pre-order it a few days back on Steam, you are forced to use that platform to get it. Now, here's the thing, you might say, well, many games are just on Steam and nowhere else. Well, yeah, that's true, but if those publishers wish to have their games on other outlets, they can. Epic Store doesn't allow that in any way, shape or form. In fact, the previous Metro games are both on Steam 
and on GOG. Only after one year, when nobody really cares about those games, is when Epic allows them to put out on other outlets. Not only that, there's a variety of websites and ways you can purchase Steam games, and I'm not talking about those weird and shady key websites, but like Green Man Gaming, Humble Bundle, GOG, which has this connect to Steam option, and a variety of ways to purchase the said games on Steam. There's exceptions, of course, to the Epic Store, like The Division 2 being both available on the set epic store and you play but you play is a publisher on store and launcher so doesn't really apply so making games exclusive in the manner epic store is doing is simply putting anti-consumer as it leaves the store to do whatever they want with the game because guess what is the only place you can get it plus all the other options steam presents us are then gone and that enrages as players and consumers to have that system forced upon us which is more akin to how consoles have been for years but consoles and pc work are differently. Then there's the moral or principle side of it. Epic Sword isn't enticing you to go to their store to buy games there and play them there, besides those handful of free games they offer every two weeks. They're forcing you to go there by making games exclusive to them, by buying out quote unquote companies and publishers. You know what will happen to many gamers that previously wanted to purchase the product? Well, they will simply not buy it. But there's more reasons that you should be aware and that makes Epic Games Store not as appealing and honestly really shady. Uh, well, first, let's cover all the main features that the Epic Games Store clearly lacks. And yes, you can argue here as well that it's a relatively new platform while Steam had years to improve and add new features. So a good example here is that Epic Games Store lacked a refund option on games. Now recently they matched that to be equal to the Steam's refund policy. So fair enough and good on them, but let's cover other features that it also seems to lack and that it doesn't seem to have any interest in the future to add them. First, any sense of community simply does not exist. When I see what people say about the game, when I see their reviews and how long they play that game, pros and cons, well, tough, it doesn't have it, nor is planning on having it, as apparently that breeds toxicity and review bombing. If you don't know what review bombing is, is when there's a clear dislike towards a game and people just go there and vote the minimal possible score. So I think Fallout 76 on Metacritic, for an example. How is it wanting to know if a game is good or not? toxic. Like, I enjoy playing indie games, you know how I know an indie game is worth it or not? By reading the reviews and people's thoughts on Steam. A recent game came out on Epic, for an example, an indie game called Genesis Alpha 1. I wanted to see some reviews and thoughts of people on it. Guess what? I can't. Why? Because it's an Epic Store exclusive and doesn't or will not include any of those features. GOG, for example, has a forum as well where people can discuss the game so there's no reviews per se or a score but it's something so that's three big ones are already there no user profiles no user reviews and no forums or any place to discuss the game's quality so all of this is in turn in a way protecting the game companies and publishers instead of protecting the consumers of whom they should be looking out for. Then there's also these other things such as no cloud saves, uh, community groups, library sorting, account sharing, broadcasting, Linux support, all these other uh, user created content like uh, mods, item trading, guides, and I mean the list goes on and on. Now small things like achievements Sure, they can be added in the future, but those big ones, no reviews or discussing on games whatsoever, really? I mean, the store doesn't even have a search function while looking up games. Is that a feature to do or is it to force you to look through games to potentially lead you to a purchase? Like why? The only thing that the Epic Store shares with Steam or other stores like GOG is the fact that you can have friends and talk to them. That's it. Now, if you start and you can start digging deeper, you can find these conspiracy sort of theories that make you not want to use a store. And yes, you can put on your tinfoil hats because Epic Games is 40% owned by Tencent, a huge Chinese conglomerate. Now, there was all these kinds of rumors about Epic Store would sell or share your data with these big companies. Now, this was refuted by Epic own CEO saying they will never do that. Now, you can always be one of those and keep your hat on and doubt it. But something I think is important to know is where all these roots 
lead. All in all, taking conspiracy theories aside, there's no denying Epic Store practices are simply dirty and anti-consumer. It does have uh, good things. They have an extremely competitive prices in comparison to Steam on a sale cuts, which has made the US version of the game cheaper. But most of them are not for us, the consumers, the players, just means for publishers and yes, publishers, not developers, because they are usually the culprit of this to simply make more money. Now that said, are they really gonna make more money? Because from what I've seen, all this backlash, even after the big pre-order influx there was on Steam after the story broke, there was a vast quantity of people avoiding to purchase the game now and boycotting it. So will they though? In the end, uh, maybe this will force uh, Steam to change some of their policies. I mean, Steam isn't perfect. Uh, there's many things I don't like about it, but so far they still the store that I can put the biggest trust on. They have all the features that are pro-consumer to some extent, or even just quality of life ones. And until I see Epic Store doing something of the sort and stop making games exclusive to it, even if it's a timed one, and fight for popularity and consumers by enticing you to use it by adding cool features or having good sales or whatever, it won't have my support. Simply as that. But do let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, do you like or trust Epic Game Store? Will you not purchase Metro at all at this point? Do you even care? I mean, at this point, it's just gonna get worse. As, as I said, the same happens with uh, streaming services all competing with each other, some dirty, and we, the consumer, are just left into just using or paying uh, multiple services, bloating the market. But anyway, make sure to leave all those comments and thoughts down below, smash that like button, subscribe and hit that little bell to make sure you keep getting more videos. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon.